Good day, Eco 231 students. We continue with Chapter 3 in Week 3. And we are continuing with consumer behavior, particularly Sections 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5. This deals with consumer choice, reveal preference, and marginal utility and consumer choice. Last week, Week 2, you dealt with consumer preferences and budget constraints. So it is important that you have done that work first before we continue. Now, section 3.6 is not covered in second year microeconomics. Let's begin with consumer choice. We had a look at consumer preferences and budget constraints in sections 3.1 and 3.2 respectively. Based on our understanding of these two sections, we can now determine how consumers decide how much of which good to buy. Consumers are assumed to be rational, hence they should opt to maximize their satisfaction or utility given their respective budgets. So to determine this market basket, two conditions must be met. And these two conditions are, it must be allocated, the market basket must be allocated on the budget line. Secondly, it must give the consumer the most preferred combination of goods and services. We can show the solution to this consumer choice problem graphically in figure 3.13. Here we have three indifference curves. There you go, U1. U2 and U3 represent the three indifference curves. And we know that U3, the indifference curve that is furthest from the origin, will yield the highest amount of satisfaction. We also see in this diagram that we have three different market baskets. At point B, you are on U1, and it is not the preferred market basket as you are on a lower indifference curve U1. Although the point lies on the budget line or budget constraint, if there is a reallocation of income to buy more food and less clothing, there could be an increase in satisfaction. So if we look at point A, here the same amount of money is spent because once again both point A and point B lie on this budget line. But we can see that it is in fact on a higher indifference curve U2. So hence this consumer would yield a higher level of satisfaction. Basket D is not attainable. So although this basket would be preferred to both A and B, because it is on a higher indifference curve, but it isn't on the budget line. So given the consumer's income and the prices of the two goods, currently this point, this market basket D is not attainable for the consumer. So point A represents the highest indifference curve that touches the budget line. It is a point of tangency. We can see that at point A, U2, this indifference curve, touches the budget line at a point. This, mean that, this means that the budget line slope, essentially, and the slope of this indifference curve are equal at this point. Now, the marginal rate of substitution you learnt is the negative slope of the indifference curve, right? So you previously learned that your MRS, your marginal rate of substitution, is the negative of the slope of the indifference curve. Satisfaction is maximized where your marginal rate of substitution is hence equal to the ratio of the prices, which is the slope of your budget line. Here you have the marginal rate of substitution of food for clothing equal to the ratio of the prices of food to clothing. This 
example is a type of optimization condition we encounter in economics. So in Eco 235, for those of you doing the mathematics economics course, this is the type of problem you will deal with where we talk about constrained optimization. Namely, it is an optimization problem. We are wanting to maximize utility or satisfaction given a constraint and that constraint here is the budget constraint. However, this week in Eco 235, you are first learning about unconstrained optimization. So again, a situation where we try to optimize or maximize a particular situation, but this week in Eco 235, like I said, you deal with unconstraints. So there's no, no constraints. Let's come back to this particular slide. So in this example, the price ratio is given as a half because the cost of getting one unit of food is half a unit of clothing. Similarly, at A, here yeah, at A, the marginal rate of substitution also equals a half. So the consumer would give up half a unit of clothing for one unit of food. If you are uncertain of where we are getting these values, this is following on from the example that we started with food and clothing in last week's um, narrated PowerPoints. Right? So if we find a situation where the marginal rate of substitution is not equal to the price ratio, then satisfaction would not be minimized, would not be maximized, sorry. So that is an example such as at point B. So here we can see if we look at point B, the price ratio, so the price ratio, remember your price of the good on the horizontal axis over the price of the good on the vertical axis. So P of F over P of C is still equal to a half. Remember the price of one unit of food was $1 and the price of a unit of clothing was $2. So hence the ratio or the slope of your budget line is a half. However, at point B, if we look at the slope, of this indifference curve u1 it is in fact approximately minus one if you look at the point b we can see at this point there's approximately a change of 10 clothing remember you have to give up clothing to obtain units of food so we can see minus 10 over 10 gives you approximately an mrs a marginal rate of substitution of one Thus, at point B, we find that our marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of your indifference curve, is not equal to the slope of your budget constraint or budget line. In fact, it doesn't touch the line at one point. Well, it intersects the, point, the budget line at point B. So it would be worth the consumer's benefit to, in fact, purchase more food and less clothing. So have a reallocation in terms of spending less on clothing and more on food to arrive at point A. And in so doing, they reallocate their budget, but now they are still spending the same amount, but they are on a higher indifference curve, U2. So just a few concepts to recap. We said that satisfaction is going to be maximized. So optimizing the satisfaction of the consumer where the marginal rate of substitution. So in symbols, your marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve, is equal to the slope of the budget constraint, which is given by the ratio of the prices of the two goods. Right? Secondly, we can define marginal benefit and marginal cost. Now, marginal benefit is the benefit from the consumption of one additional unit of good, right? So as you consume an additional unit of good, there is some extra benefit that the consumer is obtaining. Whereas your marginal cost is going to be the cost associated with that one additional unit of good. 
Thus, we can conclude that our marginal benefit is given by our marginal rate of substitution and our marginal cost is in essence given by the ratio of the prices of the two goods. So we can say that satisfaction is then maximized when the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. Here we have an example, 3.3, that deals with the designing of new automobiles and consumers' choices of automobile attributes in terms of space versus acceleration or horsepower. That is how speed would be measured. So please work through this example again in your own time to broaden your understanding of how we can apply our economic model to various cases. We now move on to corner solutions. So what is a corner solution? Well, indifference curves can be used to show conditions where consumers buy in extremes. So let's have a look at figure 3.15. Now here we have a consumer that has the following budget line, A, B, and the two goods that can be bought are frozen yogurt and ice cream. So those are the two goods then ca that can be bought. Point B is the point of maximum satisfaction. So that is the point of maximum satisfaction. So what we see here is only one of the goods are consumed by the consumer, and that is ice cream. So a situation where consumers purchase in extreme. So although there are two goods in this basket, the consumer would only opt to purchase the one particular good. So a corner solution can be defined as a situation in which the marginal rate of substitution for one good chosen in the market basket is not in fact equal to the slope of the budget line. So here we see that no frozen yogurt is consumed and the bundle occur occurs at B, at the corner of B, hence corner solution. So given the budget line AB, the highest level of satisfaction is going to be achieved at B on this indifference curve U1. And the consumer is consuming all of ice cream and no frozen yogurt. Hence, we find that the marginal rate of substitution, we can state is greater than or equal to the ratio of the price of ice cream over the price of frozen yogurt. That must be essentially satisfied for maximum satisfaction in a corner solution. So this is a scenario where the consumer may purchase in extremes. We continue with example 3.4 and example 3.5. So example 3.4 concerns consumer preferences for health care versus other goods. Um, and again, work through these examples for your own benefit to enhance your understanding. Right. And the next example continues with a college trust fund. So that is figure 317, example 3.5. And again, work through these examples to enhance your understanding of how our analysis can be applied in various scenarios. I'm going to conclude here and then we will continue with part two, beginning with revealed preferences. And that is section 3.4.